Hi, I'm Mike Smith at BRP Technical Training. Welcome to this training on dynamic power steering. Over the years, BRP has used several different styles of DPS modules. This training takes a look at their role in the steering system and how they work. This training will overview the operation, components, electrical connections, and some tech tips that are useful when working on vehicles with dynamic power steering. First off, let's make sure we're talking about the same thing. Dynamic power steering, or DPS, accomplishes the same tasks as electronic power steering available on vehicles from other manufacturers. Let's look at how the DPS operates. DPS offers variable steering assistance to the rider, adapting the level to the vehicle's speed. At lower speed, assistance is increased to facilitate steering, while at a higher speed it is reduced for a more authentic steering feel. Finally, on some models it's possible to choose between three modes of steering assist to match each rider's preferences. D-rating is the automatic reduction of the available steering assistance from 100% or full assistance to 0%, meaning no assistance, regardless of which DPS mode the rider may have selected. D-rating protects the DPS motor from overheating when highly solicited, usually in situations such as low battery voltage, uneven terrain, rock climbing, using track kits or plows, or low-speed maneuvers, like turning in a parking lot. The normal assistance level will return when riding conditions are back to normal and the internal DPS module temperature decreases and or voltage increases. Now, let's see what's inside a DPS module. In a nutshell, here are the key points of our newest DPS module. It has a magnetic shaft, a worm gear, one connector, and a brushless motor. It also has an optional built-in steering angle sensor when required for use with a stability system. The motor would normally turn the shaft that I'm turning by hand. Notice that the worm gear is turning a full 360 degree gear. The range of this DPS module is unlimited. In other words, the vehicle steering and suspension systems determine the possible stop-to-stop -stop steering range, not the DPS module. This also means that the DPS does not need to be centered when being installed. Going right through is the single-piece main shaft. The torque sensor is located inside the top cover. The electric motor is used to turn the worm gear. The worm gear turns the rotation gear mounted on the main shaft. The PC board is located in the cover with the sealed connector. The torque that the driver exerts on the steering is transferred to the main DPS shaft and measured by the deformation of the magnetic field inside the shaft. The torque sensor measures these changes. The steering shaft going through the DPS module is one piece with a very high torsional stiffness. This enables steering kickback to be passed through the DPS module back to the steering column and driver. This allows for a more authentic driving experience, although, depending on the DPS mode, kickback can be negated. The worm gear is angled to provide an optimal meshing angle and minimize backlash. The angle also optimizes force and feedback in both directions. The angled shaft also allows the steering column to be turned without using the DPS motor, in the case of a DPS malfunction. For simplicity, this DPS module only has one electrical connector. The electronics are mounted in the DPS housing. A brushless motor means that the armature is outside and the magnets are in the center, rotating with the shaft, which greatly helps to dissipate heat. BRP also widely uses the three connector DPS module. This module can be summarized as using a magnetic shaft to calculate steering torque, using a worm gear to drive the steering shaft, having three connectors, and using a typical brushed motor. Normally, the motor would turn the shaft that I'm turning with a screwdriver. 
Note that this DPS module's stop-to-stop -stop steering range is limited by the internal mechanism. Therefore, it's very important to make sure the DPS module is centered before connecting it to the rest of the steering system. The internal circuitry is sealed inside the housing. BRP has also used a two-connector DPS module. Its role in the steering system is the same, however, it measures steering effort using a torsion rod. This unit was only used on model year 2014 and 2015 side-by-side -side vehicles. Now, let's see what electrical inputs the DPS uses. All DPS modules have the same electrical connections. Power can be supplied by more than one wire. Switched power to turn the module on. CAN high and CAN low wires to connect the module to the CAN network. And grounds, which can be supplied by more than one wire. In order to determine how much steering assist to provide, the DPS module uses the engine RPM vehicle speed and other dynamic driving inputs, as applicable, from the CAN bus. DPS shaft torque sensor input, as measured by the steering force the driver is exerting. Electrical system voltage. If the electrical system's voltage drops below a threshold, the DPS will start derating or turn off. And the internal DPS module's temperature. And finally, a few things you should know when working on units with DPS. It's very important to follow the tightening sequence in the shop manual. This sequence ensures that you don't induce a ghost torque into the DPS because of misaligned steering components. When connected to buds, always perform any available DPS updates. As a general precaution, keep anything magnetic away from the steering column and DPS module, especially magnetic trays for holding bolts. This is also true if welding in the area. Do not ground a welder anywhere near the DPS module. Always perform the proper DPS module resets as per shop manual procedures when servicing DPS modules. There's a lot to know about the DPS systems on BRP products. Search the Knowledge Center and applicable shop manuals for information on specific models.